some behold the soul in amazement. Similarly, others describe it as marvelous. Still others listen about the soul as wondrous. And there are others who even after hearing all about the soul do not comprehend it at all. Through the instruction of a true guru, the deep delving devotee with beatific vision beholds the soul as an amazing luminous wonder. Others, diving into the ocean of ecstasy, describe it unceasingly as a marvelous vibratory entity of wisdom. Others who listen to the wondrous cosmic vibration of Om, the Amen, feel the soul as an exquisite dream song of ever new joy. There are others who have not experienced the soul. Their ears of spiritual perception are deaf unable to grasp its philosophy, even when they repeatedly hear about it. The three modes of perceiving the soul mentioned in this stanza, beholding, describing or speaking of, and listening about imply three of the manifestations by which the soul reveals itself. Light, beholding. Wisdom, describing its wonder. And cosmic sound, hearing. Communion with the bliss imparting cosmic sound of Om. Spirit and soul manifest as light, wisdom, and sound. The spirit in the unmanifested state is ever existing, ever conscious, ever new bliss. The soul is a ray of the spirit. The spirit manifests itself as bliss imparting cosmic light, cosmic wisdom, and cosmic sound. The soul, therefore, is also perceived as blissful cosmic light, cosmic wisdom, and cosmic sound. Through various techniques learned through a true guru, the devotee finds his intuition absorbed in these manifestations of the soul. When yogis develop deep intuition, they may experience the soul as an amazing mystical light. When devotees feel the soul as a ray of cosmic intelligence, they speak of it in terms of marvelous wisdom. Others perceive the soul as an exquisite audible vibration of the wondrous cosmic sound or blissful OM. Superficial truth seekers remain so engrossed in restlessness that no matter how many times they listen to a wise man's discourse about the soul, they understand him no better than if listening to one speaking a foreign language. It can be safely said that only an advanced devotee perceives the soul as cosmic light or cosmic wisdom or cosmic sound. Intuition bridges the chasm between intellectual knowledge 
and realization. Ordinary human beings studying and working with material life are circumscribed in their understanding by their sense perception and rationalizing intelligence. With undeveloped intuition, their limited power of intellectuality cannot truly comprehend matters of the spirit, even when such truth is expounded to them. Though colossal intellects and famous theologians may be well read about the soul, they may nevertheless understand little about it. On the other hand, even illiterates given to deep meditation will be able to clearly describe the nature of the soul from their own direct experience. Intuition bridges the chasm between intellectual knowledge of the soul and actual realization of the divine self. Soul and spirit and all inner truths can be apprehended only by developing the power of intuition by regular deep meditation. Intelligence and sense perceptions can perceive only phenomena or qualities of the eternal substance. Intuition alone can perceive the essence of that substance. Therefore, it is evident that the culture of intuition by meditation must precede true perception. In the life of every person, two forces of knowledge are operative from birth. One, the power of human reason, along with its satellites of sensation, perception, conception, and so forth. Two, the power of intuition. The former is developed through social institutions and interactions. The latter usually remains uncultured, undeveloped, because of want of proper guidance and methods of training. In almost everyone, lower forms of intuition now and again express themselves in otherwise inexplicable experiences of knowing. Those that come of themselves independent of the testimony of the senses and reason. These intuitive glimpses are so-called hunches, strong inner feelings, premonitions, prophetic dreams. These are sometimes the crystallized experiences of former births. For example, certain knowledge about persons or events carried over from the past that have a predictable future and have no great spiritual value. Other such experiences indicate a little capacity for being calm and intuitively receptive. Others indicate just an unusually keen but passive rationality. All power of knowing borrows its ability from intuition. The highest expression of intuition is that by which the soul knows itself. The knower, knowing, and known exist as one. When intuition comes in touch with matter, it passes through various stages of evolution. As the soul evolves in expression through five stages, or koshas, as the various qualities of inert matter in minerals, as life without 
cognizing power in plants as consciousness and sense perceptions in animals, as intellect and ego consciousness in man, and as divinity in an enlightened man. So also, the knowing powers of the soul undergo evolutional progress and refinement through these various stages of soul evolution. As unconscious response in minerals, as feeling in plant life, as instinctive knowledge in animals, as intellect, reason, and undeveloped introspective intuition in man, and as pure intuition in the superman. Five forms of intuition. In man, the conscious awakening of intuition expresses itself in five forms, as determined by the effects of the five koshas inherent in his consciousness. They are as follows. The first form of intuition the crudest form, is the basic feeling that I exist with a body and a mind. This feeling every human being has, this is called the intuition of the Anamaya Kosha, the consciousness of existence in the gross or matter plane when one is limited to sense knowledge or inferential knowledge, he is on the crude plane of intuition. Why is this called intuition at all? Because in every thinking or sensing process, there is the immediate feeling of minus. This feeling is a direct awareness. It cannot be given by any mediary in the world. Every being knows that he exists. It is a feeling that is with him even in sleep and dreams. This knowing comes from the knowledge or intuition of the ever conscious soul. The second form of intuition is of the pranic energy, the vital or life current that courses through every cell of the body. It is the intuition or immediate knowledge of the pranamaya kosha, the plane of the life forces that create and sustain the body. In the primary form of this intuition, one hears subtle sounds sees subtle lights, feels subtle sensations, smells subtle fragrances, and tastes subtle flavors. These are not outward sensations. They have nothing to do with the physical sense organs. In the higher form of this intuition, one feels the pranic force in the subtlest way in every part of the body. Intensified forms of the intuition of prana. For example, when the yogi perceives the soul as cosmic sound, as noted in the Gita stanza, depend upon the succeeding stages of intuition. When one is in the second form of intuitive knowledge or prana, he has partially or wholly withdrawn his consciousness from the matter plane of Anamaya Kosha. The third form of intuition is the direct knowledge of manas or mind. 
Its effect and its combinations with other principles of perception and cognition, along with the separate knowledge of the subtle organs of sense. When one has attained this stage of intuition, the attention is not on the matter plane, that is, the body, nor much on the pranic plane, though some action of prana may be involved in the experiences of this state. This is called the intuition of the manomaya kosha, or mind plane. The consciousness in this plane may be worked on by prana or life energy, and visions are then seen. In this form of intuition, one is not conscious of the outside world at all, or very little, depending on the depth of meditation. In the undeveloped stage of this form of intuition, one may see visions of all sorts, either fitfully generated or voluntarily willed. For some people, it is not under control and so visions are fitfully generated. For the adept, such phenomena are voluntary and under control of the will. Visions are astral in substance, projections of prana and consciousness as lifetronic images. Visions experienced by those whose intuition is still in undeveloped stages may be little more than entertaining phenomena, glimpses into the subtle astral realms, distractions eschewed by the serious God-seeker. Meaningful visions having true spiritual value are engendered by the soul and spirit through pure intuition, working on prana and the God-attuned consciousness of the devotee for the purpose of elevating him to ever higher spiritual states. As for example, beholding the soul as cosmic light. The fourth form of intuition is the direct knowledge of the operation of buddhi or discriminative intellect along with knowledge of the ego. One in this stage does not feel the whirl of the mind, the race of prana, or the weight and confinement of the body. He feels existent above them, an existence without any other adjunct or condition. Though there may remain a doubt in him whether he is knowing his true self or not. This is the intuition of the Janana Maya Kosha, or intellect plane. When this stage is high, fully developed, it is called cognitive meditation. It begets keen discernment of truth manifesting as wisdom. The fifth form of intuition is the direct knowledge of bliss, as depending upon no object, mediary, or condition. This is intuition of Ananda Maya Kosha. It bestows all fulfilling joy, crowning divine experiences with ultimate satisfaction. In this, as in the previous states, the consciousness has been wholly withdrawn from the body plane, or at least nearly so. Only the highest of spiritual beings very few in this world have pure soul intuition.
remember that the first form of intuition is possessed by everyone. The other four forms must be developed. These latter four forms of intuition are not wholly separate. As they develop, one form may manifest when others are present also in some measure. In meditation, when the devotee sees subtle light or hears subtle sound, for example, he may have the intuition of bliss mixed with it to some degree. Or when he intuitively feels himself consciously existent without consciousness of the body, as in the intuition of Janana Maya Kosha, he may have simultaneously the intuition of unending bliss flowing throughout his being. The highly advanced devotee has this intuitive experience. He feels the soul reflected in the purified, adjunctless intellect and ego. And that ananda, divine bliss, is flowing therefrom. Even during the performance of worldly duties, the higher intuition of that spiritual man remains with him in greater or lesser extent according to his spiritual development. Pure intuition is soul intuition. Knowing the soul by the soul, seeing the soul with the eyes of the soul, so to speak. Here there are no modifications of intuition. As the intuition or intellect or prana or mind or matter, the yogi in this state is above them all, knower, knowing, and known, having become one. He is fully conscious of his true self. This is the real soul consciousness, and in fact, it is God consciousness. For the soul is realized as nothing other than the reflection of spirit. Only the highest of spiritual beings, very few in this world, have this pure soul intuition. Some have it at times, as when in deep meditation. Some are often fixed in it for longer periods, even after meditation. The more one is anchored in this consciousness, the more one feels the whole world to be akin. Stars, earth, plants, animals, man. He feels all to be pervaded by the same soul which he feels to be himself. When soul intuition intensifies, and the yogi remains unbrokenly in that consciousness for a long time, with no desire or effort to hold on to the accoutrements of delusion, then even his body cage cannot last. He is one with God. Thus it is declared in this Gita stanza, the wonder of the soul, and that it cannot be known by the ordinary or even keen intellect, but only by those who actually perceive it through intuition. Progressively unfolding by the practice of the right techniques of meditation, Intuition makes possible the experience of the various manifestations of the soul. 
and ultimately the realization of oneself as soul, one with spirit. Excerpts from the book God Talks with Arjuna, the Bhagavad Gita by Paramahansa Yogananda. <laughs> 